Senator Victor Boyce. Thank you, Gaherlik, and, and thank you, Minister. I, I suppose at the very outset I want to say I'm fully committed to 16-year-olds having the right to vote. You know, in this state, 17-year-olds can have consensual sex, but yet they can't vote. It's not, it's not extraordinary in the Republic. It's not really extraordinary and profound, really, in many ways, and disappointing. Uh, I want, we're talking about amendments 13 to 16. Now, firstly, I want to acknowledge the enormous work of Fintan Walfield uh, and, indeed, Senator Rouen. And to say that when I, sat, when I listened to Senator Rouen today, I, I identified with everything you said. And, and I think for most of us in, in this chamber, we were more like very politically active as very young people. I think of the activism in terms of the environment. I think, Minister, of your party, and I think if we really analyse the results of the last general election, it was young people that influenced their parents to vote green. The green tide was as a result of young people mobilising, not because they, had a, they didn't have a vote, but they certainly, a lot of my friends told me that kids were in the car as young as seven, eight, and nine saying, are you going to vote green? It was re really, you know, I think of Flossie, I know, I'm familiar with her, I've met her, and she's very active out in Don Leary in terms of cleaning up the coast and all of that stuff, and, and many other things as well. So I think the Greens' success in the general election that has put them into government, this tripartite coalition government, in turn has put you in as a minister. Uh, it, it was the young people, predominantly. It was all sorts of people. It was cross-section. But it was the Green time. But it was young people who were exceptionally active. If you talk about the green schools in Antashka, you'll talk about it. If you talk about young people active in Amnesty International, if you talk to young people involved in the Irish Council of Civil Liberties, if you talk to young people who are involved in everything, I think back many years ago, when I was a political activist, I think it was 14 or 15, we were all at that age, a lot of us, very opinionated, we had views. We thought we could contribute. We were involved in student politics. You'll find we were all, many of us were here involved in debating. We were, inv we were argumentative. We were incorrigible. I'm sure we were all of those things. But we believed and we were passionate about what we believed on. We might have been a bit misguided from time to time. That goes with the terrain as well. But I think that's a really, really important point to make. And I think your party benefited more from young people's political activism than any other, uh, than any other but all, all were involved. And therefore, I think there's a great expectation of you as minister uh, and as a very successful minister and green minister in government, and one that's popular across both houses. That's something I've observed, and I want to say that to you. Uh, and I would hope, genuinely hope, that we wouldn't only have a promise today, that we would see today the government come in here to this chamber, and I hope there is going to be a vote in these amendments, because I think there should be. We should put, put people on the record. Uh, and I hope that there'll be some sort of enlightenment here today, because there's been an amazing contribution, really, really strong contributions from all sides of the House here today in relation to it. This is legislation. We're looking at this particular bill, which is the Electoral Reform Bill 2022. What more appropriate place than to be amending the legislation? Wouldn't it be great that Shannon Aaron took a decision here today and had the support? I don't doubt your support. I think Senator O'Reilly spoke very well too in favour of it. I want to also pay tribute to Neil Richmond, who's a TD now, but was a senator here, who spoke very much in favour of the 16-year-olds. I want to pay tribute to young Fine Gael for their commitment. So I don't understand why these dots aren't joining up. All political groups and all political parties, and none, are talking about this promise of 16-year-olds having votes. But somehow, the government don't seem to be able to get it together. But it's early days. So I really think that's important. So go back to this thing about young people being involved in, in the environment. Look at all the young people that come out and piled into uh, Dublin Castle to celebrate marriage equality. They were the people. They were the 10, 11, 12 and 13 year olds that were knocking on the doors. They were the people who were out in Pride last week, and rightly so, and proud of that fact. They were influencers for change. Yeah, the politicians drummed up there in the afternoon to the cameras and the music and the bands and said, weren't we great? But young people were behind those campaigns too. So when you think of planet, the environment, you think of our built heritage campaigns that you would have been involved with, with young people in Kilkenny. You see young people all over them. So why is it that somehow we can't connect? I want to also acknowledge Senator Malcolm Burns' contribution here today. It was a good one. But that's great, and he's in the government party. But he's got to bring people with him, too. We bring people with ourselves. So it's, and and I, I really acknowledge, and I want to thank Malcolm for his excellent contribution for here. So again, it begs the question. You know, we see young people involved in student politics. 
We see huge amounts of young people involved in universities, going for educational opportunities, apprenticeships, all sorts of training. We see young people active in our communities, involved in our tidy towns, involved in strong advocacy work. We want them engaging. We want them not only to hear their voices, we want them in these active particip participating in elections. And I see the local elections and the European elections as a real, real opportunity. And surely we can do that in a, a two year, two and a half year more programme of government. Surely it can be made a priority. So we need to send a strong message out to young people today. We're not just talking here. We believe in them. We believe they should be supported. And it's, 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 it's even late. But let's today, based on the conversations, based on your absolutely commitment, based on a senator from Fianna Fáil who's spoken here, based on Senator O'Reilly's contribution and strong support for 16 year olds, let's try and push it on a bit. And what better way, yes, for the Commission to go on and do their work, but what better way than Shannon Aaron today to take a decision to support Amendment 13, 13 to 16 are the ones we're dealing with in this group. I think it's right we should support it. I think we all have an opportunity across this House to demonstrate our absolute commitment. And yes, the Commission can go on with its work, but let us send that strong message from Shannon Aaron today and stand in solidarity with the young people of Ireland. Thank you.